Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Steve McAdams, and I'm with the Governor's Office of Community Initiatives, and we'd like to welcome you here today for the ribbon cutting of the McArdle School of Early Autism Intervention. It has been a very quick journey to get this project off the ground. In November of 2015, Amelia Foxwell uh, came to us with the McArdles, and they were very focused on opening up this school. There was a clear need for it, and they worked very hard. And here we are, April 2016, where we're doing the ribbon cutting, and we've already done the grand opening. We'd like to welcome everybody, all of our distinguished guests, for coming out on a Sunday afternoon. We'd like to especially thank Senator Hershey, uh, the county commissioners, Sheriff Hoffman, the governor and the first lady, and we'd like to thank Gary and Sonia Mangum, Daniel Stroop, CJ and Jesse, and Mr. Dunn and his wife for helping get this project off the ground. It is with great pleasure that I get to introduce uh, CJ Tahard, CJ Tahard to, to talk about what they've done. CJ. Good afternoon to everybody. Uh, it's, a, it's a Sunday and a beautiful day, to be honest with you. I think God is happy. Nature is, you know, is with us and uh, appreciating, especially what Amelia has done. Uh, thank you to everybody who has come here. I uh, wanted to say thank you to Governor, first of all, who has liberated the state of Maryland, and we are in good hands. Secondly, I wanted to say thank you to Gary Magnum, who has introduced us to Amelia. Matter of fact, he, he's a, he, has a, he has a very good and very huge heart for everything. He is a, he's a good man. He's a God's man. And uh, we, Jesse and myself, we have been in this business so long. And I wanted to share a couple of things. Steve, thank you, so, to be honest with you, for, for your outreach to the different communities. Uh, Daniel, everybody, and uh, we are in good hands. And we, are, we are so happy to be here. Uh, I haven't uh, been in this, biz uh, this business in so long, and uh, let me tell you, it's, it, it has been a wonderful experience, but always underfunded, neglected, previous administration always used to push us under the rug. And thank you, Governor, for your support for being here. Uh, I firmly believe that this is God's work, and what is the challenge? We are dealing with the people, those cannot express themselves. They cannot tell us what, when they are in pain and when they are happy. And to be honest with you, uh, you guys are here today. It, it means a lot. It means so much. And Amelia, I call her angel. To be honest with you, she, she is nothing but an angel. So uh, I, won't, I won't take so long I, because the, there we have other people to speak about it, but thank you so much. Uh, but not uh, at what, one thing I wanted to share with you. Whenever you're looking to be, uh, looking to appreciate what you have, to be honest with you, just look around, look around you in your communities and you see somebody who's dis, uh, developmentally disabled. And one thing I guarantee you, you will get is unconditional love, which is very, which is very hard to find these days, to be honest with you. Just a hug means so much to them. Just spending 10 minutes with them, talking to them, just playing with them, to be, regardless how old they are. And it's very touching, and you will see what you will get in return is priceless. Uh, I have been doing it so long, and I, I'm sharing with you, each time I'm depressed or under pressure, I just go around somebody in my, within my own uh, uh, organization, and I come out as a brand new person. These are God's people, to be honest with you, and they have to be taken care. And thank you so much for all of you coming here uh, I'm so happy and so proud of you. Thank you. So yes, I have written this down because there's a couple of reasons. Um, I never speak from notes, but I'm going to today because it's going to help me stay on track from an emotion standpoint. And um, I really don't want to forget anything uh, that, that I feel is important to express. First of all, um, I came across 
this project through a social media post, through a, a post that Amelia Foxwell made on Facebook, probably not more than six or seven months ago. And it related to an, uh, episode, an incident that had occurred in the Queen Anne's County Schools, which I'm a huge believer in and a promoter of, you know, our education system here on the shore. I, I love what the Queen Anne's County Schools have done for our kids and for us as a family. Um, and the post that I saw from Amelia on Facebook was just outside the norm for her, and it really led me to ask questions. And when I did, it, it really led to where we are today as far as my own awareness and involvement and my wife's awareness and involvement. Um, to, to hear what CJ had to say, you, you all don't know Jesse and CJ, but, but I've gotten to know them through the Hogan campaign. Late, late in the campaign is when I first met them. And they have the most amazing hearts. They run a, an operation called the Center for Social Change. And they have the most incredible hearts. It's, it's located right across from my business in Elk Ridge. And they, they do incredible work with special needs people, primarily adults. And talking to them and getting education from them on this subject uh, has just been so eye-opening. And, and, and it really speaks to the importance of what's being done here. So I'm going to get onto these notes and get done so the governor can speak to us. Um, Amelia, as, as has been said, the McCarl family, I got a chance to go visit with them at their home probably six months ago, shortly after that post on Facebook, and just couldn't believe what I learned in a short period of time. Um, Steve McAdams, who started out here today uh, with the Governor's Office of Community Initiatives, he connects dots all around this state. His office is an amazing dot connector for people, businesses, people, individuals, uh, people like Jesse and CJ that, that have so much to offer. He brings different groups together. Squeaky is here from West Baltimore, somebody that we've met at one of the community centers in Baltimore. And he's here because of the dots that have been connected. He and his wife, Charnette, are here. They run a phenomenal community center in Baltimore. The Martin Luther King Center, and I can guess that probably 80% of the people in this audience gave coats this winter that went to the community center that Arthur um, runs. Uh, so Senator Hershey, as has been mentioned, he's really helped these folks behind the scenes in Annapolis understanding uh, what, what goes on in Annapolis and how you can, how you can get things done. Um, as I said, our own experience with the schools was, was phenomenal, but what I learned in the short version of what I learned is, our system in Maryland sets up an adversarial relationship between parents and the schools if you have a special needs child that you feel the need to advocate for and potentially move out of the school system into private, private care. And there's gotta be a better way. There is a better way. It's a, Florida is one of the states that's demonstrated that and, and we've seen it, you know, seen the results from that. Um, as we became more involved, more, more, and did more research on our own, this early intervention is really the key. The early intervention that you're going to hear about inside as you walk through and walk around is really the key to being able to take a young person, identified very early on, and truly get them mainstreamed back into society, into society, um, in a way that, that makes everybody more productive and, and everybody's lives that much better. The families, the McArdle family and so many others now that, have, that we've gotten to know, their life path completely changes when you have an autistic child. In the McArdle's case, two children, twin girls. Um, and their life path completely changes to become advocates for their children and, and their long-term betterment. Um, we have great resources in this state. However, they're few and far between and very few, if any, are here on the Eastern Shore that would address this particular need. So this school, I think of this very much uh, in line with Change Maryland, in that the school is here, the center is here, brings a lot of things under one roof that are not currently present. The Benedictine School has a great reputation not far from here, but that's for a different mission, older, older, older adult-like situation. Um, before, the, before the governor speaks, I'd like to introduce a guest, and then I'm going to come back and just say one more thing I want to say about Governor Hogan. Uh, but Emma Kelly, if you're here, where's Emma? Emma is going to come and lead us in the national anthem. What a great thing for a Sunday afternoon.
Stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. For the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rockets heard the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our Beautiful. So I didn't do a very good job with my notes, and I'm not going to go backwards. Don't worry. Um, it's 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 no secret. It's no secret here um, that I've been Sonia and I have been advocates for our now governor uh, since the first time we met back at the Ag Dinner, uh, Maryland Ag Dinner, um, a little over two years ago. It hasn't been that long. Um, you know, I experienced firsthand what so many of us have experienced at this point here in Maryland, and that is he is a listener. He's an incredible listener. He doesn't govern. He doesn't lead from something that somebody else has prepared and written down for him. He gets out in the communities and he visits with people. And when I say communities, I mean the agriculture community, the business community, the, the tech community, um, the special needs communities. He gets out and he visits with people and he listens to what we have to say. And I don't know uh, of anybody else that I've ever met in my lifetime that that is the kind of leader that he is, who pays so much attention to what we have to say. Um, as I learn more about the effects and impact of autism and how many families completely change their life's path, um, I knew that somehow this would fit into the culture that he's created here in Maryland and that he is, that is being embraced now here in Maryland to change Maryland. Um, Things that his administration is doing, things that people are now feeling empowered to do, like this center. This is private money here. This is private sweat equity, an incredible amount of it that's gone into this. Um, he's creating the, it's okay for people to come together and to get together and to do things without waiting for government. Um, and, and then in the end, we're gonna have a better result because of that working together. Um, I found out like you did one day recently, that he was going to be here. I didn't know he was coming here. Um, I saw it on social media. Uh, and, you know, he's going to commit his time to come here and, and understand what's happening close up. Again, it's not something that somebody can write down, he, but he's here. He's going to understand better when he leaves here what this place is all about. And I just really, really appreciate that. I'm proud to know the McCardles, proud to know Amelia and her family um, and the team that they've assembled to bring this to this point is just incredible. And I'm really proud to introduce our friend and the friend to all of, all of us here in Maryland, the 62nd governor of the state of Maryland, my friend Larry Hogan. Wow. I think I ought to take Gary everywhere I go. What do you think? That's a pretty nice, pretty nice introduction. Um, I sure appreciate everybody being here. It's great to be with you this afternoon. We've had an incredible four-day tour of the Lower Eastern Shore, and we're on our way back home, and we're so, uh, so so excited to have the opportunity to be here with you this afternoon. I brought a little special person with me, too, that we forgot to say anything about. This is the First Lady of Maryland, my wife, Yumi. <laughs> Gary, thank you for that great introduction. You and Sonia have been such incredible friends, and uh, you mean so much to me. And uh, you really brought it to my attention, even though you, don't, you, you didn't know I was coming. It was because of you that we ended up here today. Um, I first want to say how much I appreciate the fact that we were able to reschedule for this beautiful day today. We were supposed to do it on Wednesday. And um, unfortunately, we lost a Prince, uh, Prince George's County professional firefighter who uh, tragically lost his life 
uh, from a gunshot. And uh, the funeral was on Wednesday, and I was in St. Mary's County for that at the same time that this was originally scheduled. So thank you for being patient. I think today it worked out even better, right? It's a beautiful day, and more people came. So thank you all uh, very much. Uh, John Olmschneider, they call him Skillet, is the uh, firefighter that lost his life. Uh, and it's, a, it's tragic, but we have great news this morning. Uh, Kevin Sweeney, the 19-year-old volunteer firefighter, was released from the hospital. At four gunshot wounds, he's already out of the hospital. He's doing great. <clears throat> We've had a great time all over the Eastern Shore for four days, um, meeting with local leaders and uh, business leaders, community leaders, and announcing um, transportation projects and opening other uh, exciting projects like this in different places. We visited elementary schools. We had a tremendous time, and now uh, it's incredible to be here in Queen Anne's County once again to uh, celebra celebrate the uh, opening of this McArdle Center for Early Autism Intervention. And uh, I want to begin by recognizing the people again who had so much to do with this happening. First of all, Terry and Emily McArdle, let's give them another round of applause. You know, through their own experiences as parents, the two beautiful twin daughters, Terry and Emily, recognized the need in the community. Um, Amelia, you know, you are an angel. And you, she had a lot to do with making this happen as well. About one in 68 children in the United States has been identified. Uh, one, in, one in 68 children born in the United States is, has been identified with autism spectrum disorder. That's an incredible statistic. Autism doesn't discriminate based on race, ethnicity, or socioeconomic groups. And uh, the fact is that some students with autism require extra services and attention and resources that are not always available to them in the public schools. So Terry and Emily formed a vision and then worked tirelessly uh, to make that vision a reality. And many of you here, uh, CJ and Jesse and Steve, uh, the Mangums, the Duns, I don't, I don't want to leave anybody out. I know a lot of people here today had a lot to, to do with making this happen, and every one of them deserves a big round of applause for making this a reality. In the past, parents raising an autistic child would have to travel across the Bay Bridge uh, or elsewhere throughout the state to get the help and the resources that they needed, uh, but not anymore. Now every single one of those resources is available to them right here at the McArdle Center. Every child in Maryland deserves the opportunity to grow, to thrive, and to live to their full potential. That's why I'm so incredibly happy to be here today to uh, share in a project that will have such a profound effect um, on so many lives. Since taking office last year, uh, the primary focus of our administration, as Gary said, has been to change Maryland for the better. And I know that the McArdle family, their goal, their vision, and their efforts are helping us to achieve that goal to make Maryland better than it already was. This is an exciting achievement for Queen Anne County, for the Eastern Shore, for the entire state of Maryland. I thank you again for giving me the opportunity to be here today. I want to thank you all for coming. And again, recognize everyone involved in this tremendous project. And now, at this time, I'd like to uh, invite Amelia Foxwell and Emily and Terry McArdle up here so that I may present them both with a governor's citation and a proclamation. Come on up here, guys. First of all, we have a governor's citation, uh, governor of the state of Maryland to the McArdle Center. Be it known that on behalf of the citizens of this state, in recognition of the occasion of the ribbon cutting ceremony for the McArdle Center, an early autism intervention center, bringing medical, therapeutic, and educational opportunities for children with autism on the Eastern Shore, in honor of the commitment and service the center provides to the children and families dealing with the aspects of autism, and as all our citizens join in expressing our great respect and best wishes for continued success, we're pleased to confer upon you this governor's citation. It's dated today and signed by myself, the Lieutenant Governor, and the Secretary of State. And 
but uh, don't go anywhere yet. <laughs> we also have a uh, proclamation, which is a little different than a citation, uh, from the governor of the state of Maryland, naming Autism Awareness Month, April 2016, and Autism Awareness Day, which was April 2nd. And uh, I'm not going to read all of the stuff in here, but we're recognizing autism and how important it is to our state, and we're going to present you with this as well. I don't know what the rest of the program is, but I'm done with my part. I'm sure, I'm sure everybody's going to want to tour the facility, right? Um, we're going to cut the ribbon, and then we're going to have open tours. Um, so if everybody who's on the ribbon cutting line could line up kind of right along here, um, and then all of the families, staff, everybody who's helped us, if you would get in the picture somehow behind, that would be amazing. Um, so just if we can line up right here, um, Steve McAdams. <laughs> Adam Dubin. One, go! Yeah. Yeah.